Tube, how are you? My name is Colleen of Rebel Stitcher Designs. This is my handsome sidekick and the poster boy for my logo for my designs. And this is a Floss Tube special edition where I will be discussing my experience attending the 2023 Nashville Needlemore Needlework Market um, hosted by Yarn Tree. It was an absolutely amazing experience. This was my first time ever attending a market and I will do my best to give you kind of day in the life experience of a uh, designer that attended. Like I said, this is my first time so I don't have anything to compare it to. I am a new designer and I was just blown away and inspired by the energy and the creativity that took place in that uh, venue. So Market is a wholesale only show where designers, makers come, they set up a booth in an embassy suites in Franklin, Tennessee, which is near Nashville. And whole, it's a Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And then buyers come, shop owners, needlework shops, online shops come and purchase for their store. And it's kind of like a cash and carry sort of a situation. A lot of designers come out with exclusive charts um, that can only be purchased by those in attendance for a limited period of time as a thank you to those that make the trip. And um, in a nutshell, that's what it is. So I have notes I'll probably be looking at to um, refer back so I don't forget because it was an absolute oral one, and I'm sure I will be forgetting some crucial stuff, so just bear with me. I rented a Suburban and loaded that bad boy up, and that's what I took down to Nashville. The vehicle was very nice, gave me car envy, and my dear friend Jen, Jen Wagner, who has become such a great um, stitchy friend, came and helped me worked the show the whole weekend. I cannot thank her enough. She was amazing. But she lives like an hour south of me in Delaware. I'm just south of Philly. And so I loaded up the Suburban the night before and I drove down and picked her up and then we hit the road. Um, so it was from Delaware down to the Nashville area was our official drive. Um, I'm neurotic about being on time and getting places early, so we left way early. We knew there was going to be a lot of weather issues in the forecast, and luckily we had we figured we would just, when we got tired and couldn't drive anymore, we'd pull over and um, get a hotel room. But the drive went so smooth that we're like, I think we can make it all the way. So I called the hotel and they had, I was able to get not only a room for the night, but the suite that we were going to have so we could start set up early. So it was like all the stars aligned in our favor. So we drove straight through with stops. However, we did stop at a Bucky's. I've never been to a Bucky's. And um, for those of you who have never been to a Bucky's, it's like, a road stop, truck stop with maybe like a hundred different uh, gas pumps. But then if you've ever been to like an Aldi's grocery store, maybe like three of those in size, every bit of food they have, they make their own beef jerky and brisket and fudge and just shopping. It, it, it's a huge, bizarre phenomenon. And I was kind of there for it. So that was a fun experience. We did stop at a Bucky's on our way down. Um, so we arrived, we went to sleep, and then the next day we started unpacking the truck. Um, I got a very sweet care package from my friend Sarah of uh, Memphis Sarah E um, on Floss Tube. She was there to help her friend Leanne of Forbidden Fiber Company, her and Zan Crazy Band Lady Stitches were um, working that room together. And, oh, wait, where, where did I leave it? Oh, sorry, wrong bag. 
I'm so professional, aren't I? So anyway, Sarah had this gift bag and she said she put together a market like um, kind of first aid kit because she's already done it. And I have used some of the items in here, but the first was um, a bottle of Propel, which is my, not a, I, I drink that like crazy. And a bottle of Diet Coke for Jen. Sweet fuzzy slippers, slippers, slipper socks, because you're on your feet all day. Chapstick, which I already used one out of here. Um, let's see. Soothing lavender foot mask. Did I mention you're on your feet all day? Note car, uh, like a note sheet. Oops, oops, oops. I'm saving the best out of here for last. Chocolate bar. A very sweet card. Congratulating on market. And then the piece de resistance that I literally squealed out loud when I saw it was this adorable change purse. Do you notice anybody there? Isn't that just amazing? So I just, oh my God, it's like, it's just so perfect. Look at that big foot hiding in there. So Sarah, thank you so much for the very sweet care package. I really appreciated it and used a lot of items already. And unfortunately, poor Sarah got food poisoning and had to leave early. Her husband had to come pick her up. I mean, if you had to get sick at market, food poisoning is probably the way to go because at least it's not contagious. But oh, the poor thing sounded miserable. So I'll get to see Sarah and Zan at Pittsburgh soon at the Steel City Stitchers Retreat. I am very much looking forward to that. But thank you, it was so thoughtful. Um, so let's see. <sighs> my friend Jen, who I mentioned, my helper, she's really good friends with Pam from Praiseworthy Stitches. And prior to going to market, Jen had mentioned to her that her friend, this was gonna be her first market, and she generously set up a a phone call to kind of give me suggestions of things you might need to know as a first timer and just like shared her expertise and knowledge. And then we got to meet her and her wonderful husband Everett at um, market and they were just so kind and so generous and so sweet. And they like took me under their wing and they took Jen and I out to dinner Sunday night in the hotel and they were just, they treated us like, like, surrogate daughters and they were just so sweet and Pam thank you so much it was nice to have a friendly face and know if I had a question I could ask and um thank you for everything and if you haven't seen Pam's Chili Willy release for market go look at it it is stinking adorable um I think that's my first page let's see it's like when, so Friday, it was like a wholesaler meeting um, that they hold where they talk about, they had uh, Gary and Ronnie from Garron Stitchery had a, um, they were like the shop uh, representatives for like a QA and a and some other designers and they just discuss some other, you know, things that are going on. That was very informative. And then from four to eight, market opened up on Friday. Typically, Friday is the fabric free, uh, fabric feeding frenzy because everybody goes and buys fabric first because you can't print more fabric. And we all know us stitchers love our fabric. So we lucked out. Our room was right next to Fiber on a Whim. So we had a lot of uh, traffic by our uh, sweet and we were actually quite busy on Friday considering we weren't a fabric shop so that was a good omen for market Saturday we were open all day and then Sunday is the first time I was actually able to leave the suite because we were so busy um, and I was able to pop into a few shops I didn't really buy anything except for
for a couple things I'll show you for my website shop um, because I, I just was focused on you know fulfilling orders and doing the right thing by the design side of things but I did pop into some rooms I met with some amazing fabric dyers and some other designers and there's lots of fun things going on in the works in the future for Rebel Stitcher Designs, which I cannot wait to discuss more when we get to that point. But why don't I show you what I brought with me to market? Well, I'm not going to show you everything, but the market releases and um, show you the charts and we'll take it from there. Um, let's see. Well, the first chart i did not have this one ready on my last um lost tube when i was showing you my market releases it was still at the framer so this one is called happily ever after this actually i was kind of nervous releasing this one just because it does have a curse word in it it says there once was a woman who gave no fucks not even one and she lived happily ever after so I didn't know how well this was going to be received, but it actually was my, oh, here comes Boris. Hold on one second. Sorry, Boris the Bad just came strutting down here with something in his mouth I had to steal back from him. Anyway, happily ever after. This was actually my second uh, biggest seller of, of market. And um, people, you could see there were some people who were like, no, I don't think this is a fit for my clientele. And then there were some people who were like, oh my God, yes, I love it. I'll take 20 copies. So, you know, there's something for everybody, but let me show you the model. This is stitched. The model is stitched on 40 count uh, milk chocolate by XG Design. And the floss is a classic color works and one DMC. Jen Gorski, the frog stitcher on Instagram, was the model stitcher. And for this chart, I really just envisioned a woman who just stopped caring what people thought about her and lived her best life. I mean, she's got prancing bunnies and a peacock and a bird's nest, and she lives in a beautiful pink house. Of course, she has a crown and flowers. So she's just living her best life. So that was, and this is a market exclusive. For now, it can only be purchased by sh from shops who attended market. Um, I won't be selling it. Other distributors will not be selling it until May 6th, which is my birthday. So hopefully if you guys want this, you will order from one of the shops who were in attendance. And, oh, Boris. Boris the Bad strikes again. Here he is. There he is, Boris the Bad. Okay, so as I was saying, hopefully if you like any of these market exclusive releases, you will order from the shops that took the time and the expense to go to market. That's the whole point is the shops and the designers, we all need each other and we try to support each other how we can. The second chart of mine that was a Nashville exclusive is Ann Pilgrim 1819. This is a reproduction sampler that I lovingly reproduced. I had the original one in the window at market and then the interpretation was in my room. Let me show you how this looks. Freaking gorgeous. This is stitched on 40 count hog bristle by Fox and Rabbit. And this floss is a Verisois Swatage Silks. And my dear, dear friend Susie, also known as Flostitute Susie on Instagram, model stitched this for me. Look at her satin stitches. Oh my God, she is a master stitcher. Absolutely beautiful. Anyway, so this was my second uh, Nashville Market exclusive. It will um, be exclusive to shops 
that were in, in attendance until May 6th. And after that, I'll have it and any other distributor will have it. And last but not least is my booklet, Civil Samplers. This booklet contains the chart for all three of these. And these are by different civil rights pioneers, quotes by them. The first, The Cage Bird Sings of Freedom is uh, from one of Maya Angelou's writing. This one down here is uh, Shirley Chisholm. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And this one up down here is um, by the great John Lewis. Never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. And these are what the models look like for that. Let's see. Janine, not Janine, Justine of X's and Hoes. Sweet, sweet Justine. Model stitched this for me. I will get to see her in Pittsburgh very soon at the Steel City Stitchers Retreat, and I'm looking forward to that. Jan Calvert of um, Finish the Stitch and at Keepsakes did all of the um, finishing for me. So that's the Shirley Chisholm one. This is the John Lewis. And some of the floss do carry over, but they're not like complete matchy match. And then this is the Maya Angelou. But they definitely are in a similar palette. And I just put them in a dough bowl and it just tipped over. And in the booklet, I also have um, like a little blur, like a little bio and a picture of each of the people just to give you a little starting point to learn about them. So that is Civil Samplers. The last market exclusive I um, is this needle minder. It's a birthday cake needle minder. I thought that this was perfect for, we all love doing a birthday start for our birthday or birthday sales for our friends, stitch alongs. And I thought this was a great, just a celebratory needle minder. It's um, enamel, one of my designs with my ugly fingers there, sorry. So this is also exclusive to shops until May 6th, which is my birthday. Um, so if you would like to get your hands on one of these, just reach out to you know your LNS, I'm sure they were there. And, or if you don't have an LNS, you can um, just reach out to me and I'll give you some suggestions of who was there that might be near you and um, help you hook up with one of these. Otherwise I can, um, I'll have them on my website on May 6th. The last, um, this is not a market exclusive. The last thing I did have that was kind of different were these sticker packs. Um, I, have to, I don't think I've put these on the website yet. I'll have to do it while this video is uploading. I think there are 13 different stickers and they're the drawings based on my um, needle minder designs. So some of the greatest hits Bigfoot, Flostitute, Nessie, you know, Flying Pigs, you know, a lot of the fun stuff. I think there are 13 different ones. Um, I think they are $5 for the pack. I have to double check. But um, I had those there too, and they were a lot of fun. Everybody liked picking those up because we all love to put stickers in our um, book of days and sticky, stitchy journals and all that good stuff. Um, I have... Another FFO that I didn't get a chance to show beforehand, but I brought it to market and I figured this is not a market exclusive. Um, so I will show you this. This is the chart that came in my winter, let me back up here. My winter um, mystery box bag uh, mailing. And this is called, the chart is called Cold Hands Warm Heart. And the fabric is a lilac um, Jody from Steel City Stitchers fabric. And I just stitched it and finished it and backed it with this fabric. And I put in these like snowy looking beads 
in this like hurricane glass with this white fluffy stuff. And let's see, this is what the chart looks like. And here's yet another version. Yours will not be chewed unless you'd like one. I could arrange for that. Boris the Bad snuck this while I was stitching and chewed it. But um, I just wanted to show this. This is not a market exclusive. It's been out for a little bit, but I never got to show you guys how I FFO'd it. So, and I don't FFO my own stuff very often. I usually send it to the experts. So that's that. Those were my exclusives and the new FFO. Um, let's see. The Probably the most exciting news that came out of market regarding me is that Hoffman, which is the biggest cross-stitch distributor, decided to carry my stuff. So I'm just like over the moon. Um, the gentleman that represents Hoffman was there and he was like, a lot of people have been talking to me about you. I need to see your stuff. What suite are you in? And I was like 405 and he's like, oh, come on, take me down there now. And he looked around and he was like, wow, you're really talented. You know, he ended up taking a lot of my extra inventory so I didn't have to ship it to them. So shops can now order my work wholesale through the distributor or they can still order from me the way they have in the past. Either way is good. I'm just that stamp of approval from Hoffman just like validated what I've been working on and it just to hear somebody an expert in a field like that just say that he really liked your work, he liked my presentation. It just, I was like, yay. Um, I had shops that came in to shop in my suite from all over, from all over the United States, from one side to the other, north, south, east, west. I had shops from the UK, shops from Canada. I had a shop from Tanzania bought um, some of my work. It was just surreal. It was so amazing. And it was so nice to meet shop owners who you've communicated with online and put a face to it and start to develop that sort of relationship. Um, it was just, it was pretty amazing. Um, let me try to think. I saw so many people and I am going to, I know I'm going to forget people and leave them off. The one thing I didn't do at market, which I should have, and I'll definitely have to do better for next year, is um, take more pictures. I was so just in the moment and fulfilling orders and talking and just everywhere that I did not take the time to take pictures. Becca of Sambry Stitches, she's an expert. She took so many pictures and it was her first market too, so it was nice, you know, Newbies were like, hey, how you doing? You holding up? So I'm gonna have to do better on that. I will try at the end of this to make a little, I think it'd be easier if you just make a, like a little market montage sort of a thing and um, do it that way. Let's see, what else did I, oh, let me show you the couple things I did pick up for the shop. And these are on the website, I think. The, this was a market exclusive by the Primitive Hair. It, um, the cross stitch collector, it comes with the chart, fabric, buttons, and this amazing black board that it gets finished on. So it's all um, ready to go. I think it's 30 count linen. Yeah, 30 count linen by the Primitive Hair. So that, I did pick up a kit of that and I did pick up the new um, Prairie Schooler Santa. Um, that's on the website. I've already sold a couple of them so I don't know by the time this uploads if I'll have any left. But um, if you're looking for those, I do have that. But that's all I bought for the shop other than fabric for myself for models and stuff. I met with a lot of really exciting um, 
fabric dyers who I'm looking forward to collaborating with in the future. Um, Grace Note Stitches, Fabric on a Whim, uh, Laura's Fabric from uh, RETM's daughter. She was there and she has some fabric that I'm already designing stuff with. Um, La uh, Lucy Beam's daughter, I know it's not a real name, but her design name, she was there and she's got some very amazing fabric going on and I think it's called Lappin, Lappin Loops or Loop, Lupin Lappin. I might have that backwards. My dyslexia might be kicking in, but she had beautiful fabric too. So there's so many talented makers. Ymir from Almond M&Ms was there and um, we are going to be collaborating on something in the future. She's going to be working on a floss pack for me for something. There's just so many fun. I came home, you know, the 12, 13 hour drive home. And my brain is just like going like this the whole way. It was just unbelievable. I, let's see, I have one major fangirl moment I need to um, discuss. And then I just need to brag about my friend Jen for a little bit more. So Teresa Kogut came into my booth on Sunday. Like I said, Sunday was like the one day that designers can kind of pop out. Excuse me. And this is a true story. Um, and I have Jen as a witness because I would think somebody was making this up. So Teresa Kogut came into my booth or sweet or whatever you want to call it. I just wanted to introduce herself. She is just as sweet and kind as you would expect in real life. I mean, I respect and admire her work so much. Not only is she a cross-stitch designer, but she's a true fine artist. And as somebody who went to art school and is an artist, I identify with that. And she came in and she was checking out my Halloween charts and she was like, I really love the way you do Halloween. And I just, you know, really, really love your Halloween charts. And I about fell on the floor. Like, I love Teresa Kogut's Halloween. Like we both have that vintage quirky Halloween vibe. And I mean, not that, it, it, I just about fell on the floor fangirling. I was like, oh my God, play it cool, play it cool. And so that was really wonderful. And so nice of her to, kind of, you know, reach out to a new designer and give encouraging words. And it really did mean a lot to me and I appreciate it. Um, and then my girl, Jen, she's such a good friend. She took this time out, came and helped me out. We worked long days, lo unloading and loading the truck and setting up the room and filling orders and on our feet all day. And I just, we worked really well together. We had a good workflow going and I just have to thank her tremendously. She is a rock star and I'm thankful to have her as a friend and as a shop helper. And um, thank you very much, Jen. I couldn't have done it without you. You really helped the weekend go smoothly. I think that's it. Um, again, I'm over the moon, excited. And when you kind of fantasize about how something's gonna go and then it gets, it comes to fruition that good and or better than you could have ever expected. It was just, oh my goodness. It was just amazing. So that is my rambling stream of consciousness about market. Thank you to everybody who stopped by my, my suite. It was so nice to get to put faces to names and help develop those relationships. I have a lot of collaborating things that will probably be happening in the future. And I am just, my creative juices are, have been inspired. And I really feel like we are kind of at the pinnacle of like a renaissance of cross stitch in our community. We're so lucky to be stitchers at this time. I mean, the amount of talent and creativity in our industry is just unbelievable. And I am honored to be a part of it. And as a stitcher and as a designer and as a chart collector and a fabric collector. So 
hopefully this was helpful to give you a behind the scenes what it's like at market and I will try to make a little montage at the end and everybody go support your needle workshops because they make a long they work long hours to get there and to buy all that stuff to bring the fruitful bounty to you so I guess we'll say goodbye from Boris the Bad and ugh, the good boy Elvis. So thanks everybody for watching.